that's kind of how I feel self-care. It doesn't have to be like a spa day. It doesn't have to be something fancy or expensive. It can just be going like, what do I need and what is my body asking for? And for me, that like like a fish and veggie meal is just like, that's taking care of myself. It tastes good. It feels good. It feels right. That's that's going to um, go way further than I've retrained myself because it used to be like, oh, I deserve, you know, a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> I worked really hard. I deserve it. And now I'm like, I deserve somebody, me, cooking myself a really nice meal. Hey, midlifers. Welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostess. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. Hi, I'm Wendy Valentine, host of the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, I want to share something personal with you. At 45, my world turned upside down. I was going through a divorce, battling depression, grieving the loss of my brother, and dealing with chronic illness. But I want to tell you about a turning point in my journey, therapy. Speaking to a therapist was a lifeline for me. It was a safe space where I could express my pain and start to find my way back to joy and hope. That's why I'm thrilled to introduce today's sponsor, BetterHelp, the world's largest therapy service. BetterHelp offers professional licensed therapists who are available online at your convenience. You can message your therapist anytime or schedule live sessions via video, phone, or chat. I believe in the power of therapy because it helped me navigate the toughest times of my life. If you're going through a tough time or just need someone to talk to, I encourage you to try BetterHelp. As a listener of the Midlife Makeover Show, you can get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com forward slash midlife or choose the Midlife Makeover Show during sign up. Welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show, where we inspire and empower you to embrace the changes that come with this exciting phase of life. I'm your host, Wendy Valentine, and today we have a special guest who's here to share her unique journey and passion for healthy living. Our guest today is Sina Wheeler, a remarkable woman who is part of a fifth generation fishing family and the co-founder of Sina C. Sina C, Sina C. I <laughs> like how that sounds. C to C is a fantastic company that brings wild Alaskan seafood directly to your door, ensuring you get the freshest and most nutritious fish possible. C to C has been featured in Food and Wine, Epicurious, Marie Forleo, one of my fave women out there, and Seattle Magazine. Sina is not only passionate about sustainability and helping busy families eat healthier, but she's also dedicated to educating people about the health boosting benefits of wild fish. With a master's degree in nutrition and food science, specializing in quantifying omega-3s in fish and determining preferred handling practices for premium quality, Sina brings a wealth of knowledge to the table, literally. Together with her husband, Rich, Sina runs this amazing family business, spending part of the year in Alaska and enjoying the flexibility to flexibility to watch her children participate in their school sports. And of course, she loves eating and cooking fish just like me. So whether you're a seafood lover or just curious about incorporating more nutritious options into your diet, diet, I'll try to talk better today. You will love today's episode. Let's go deep diving into the world of wild Alaskan seafood. Please welcome Sina Wheeler to the show. Da, da, da. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Thank you. It's worth it. I've just, if I just left now, I'd be like, wow, that was worth it. I appreciate that. I like when you hear your own bio <laughs> being ready, like, damn, who wow. is that woman? She's awesome. <laughs> you know, right? Oh my gosh. I am so glad that you're here. It's funny because, and I'm trying to think of the name of the agency that sent your info to me to have you on the show. Oh, um, um Julie, Julie Fry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. She's so sweet. And I she remember the best. first time it came across. I mean, I, I get a ton of requests for people that want to be on the show, which is awesome. And I always go through them like, okay, how can this apply to my audience? I was like, fish, fish, hmm, fish. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I'm like, I am a huge promoter of eating fish because it's so good for you and it's so healthy for you. So I was like, heck yes. Let's be on the show and let's talk about some fish. So, awesome. it, yes. And you know what? I was telling you before uh, we hit record, I recently watched, there's two shows on Netflix that I recommend. Oh, look at all the balloons in the screen. I don't know where those are. You're watching on YouTube. All of a sudden, a bunch of <laughs> balloons came onto the screen just to celebrate the two documentaries I watched. Anyways, How to Live to 100. Uh, which is about the blue zones, people that live to 100 years old. Love uh, that one. Yeah. And the other one was, oh, you are what you eat. I love and that one too. That. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was an eye opener for me. So yeah, if you haven't watched either one of those documentaries, uh, I highly recommend those. But the you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Talks about the foods, especially here in the United States and fish specifically. And it was like, wow, just seeing some of these fish that were in, in the farm fish, oh, which yeah. I've always known to steer away from farmed fish, right? I always choose wild fish. So right. tell the audience a little bit about the difference between the two, farm well, fish versus wild caught farm versus wild absolutely yeah. you know i love that documentary if you guys haven't seen it definitely watch it and and of course i love the deep dive i mean they, they deep dove I, I just love the setup like they went into kind of the the kfo cow versus the regenerative grass-fed beef you know that kind of thing and so it was really cool and then with the fish i will say they did the best job I've seen of people really diving into farm fish because I'm kind of feel like I've been saying this, but, but people kind of go, Oh, what farm fish is bad. Like I thought it was all these things because it can be labeled as sustainable and organic and things like that. And it's just like, there's so many missed messages about the farm, but I will say first off, I felt a little bit like they also gave like two options, like, okay, here's wild fish that's overfished, too bad, or you can choose farm fish. And I felt like, hey, wait, guys, whoa, there's a third option here, sustainably caught wild fish. You know, they showed the big, um, it's funny because they were talking about salmon and and only a fisherman would notice. They showed, um, you know, videos of overfishing with these big, huge boats and overfished. And that's not how you catch salmon. So the salmon that we catch in the United States, you know, mm -hmm. like Alaskan salmon is the, is the biggest run in the United States or in the world on the planet. No, so I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay. So in Alaska, it's been fished sustainably from the beginning. So mm. it's the biggest wild run and it's hmm. still fish sustainably. So a couple of years ago, Bristol Bay, which is like the, the biggest run in Alaska, which is the biggest, you know, fishery in the world, had the biggest, largest return of salmon, the most amount of salmon returning ever recorded. Wow. In the history of the fishery. And it's like, and that's American fishing with laws, regulations, sustainability. And I, I felt like, wait a second, they talked about farmed salmon. And if you talk about wild caught salmon, you're showing these are small boats. This yeah. is one or two people. These are family, family fishing like we are. We're not actually that abnormal in the world of small boat salmon fishing. And it's like, let's talk about it. This, this yeah. wild caught salmon is, is caught in, in the States. We have laws and regulations and things like that. So I just felt like, Hey, there's a third option. 
Mm -hmm. You know, um, wild and sustainable, it doesn't have to be um, overfished and it doesn't have to be wild. So I just, that's me yeah. on my soapbox. <laughs> what, what do you mean by overfish? What do you mean by that? So I just feel like, you know, sometimes those two points is like, well, your choices are wild or I'm sorry, farmed or wild. And then the wild, they just, they call overfished wild or something. That's mm -hmm. kind of the way I felt like they talked about it in that section. And it's like, there are some species in the world that are overfished that mm -hmm. um, should maybe be avoided. Most of them are caught not in the United States because we have um, sustainable, like very, very tightly regulated. So um, I, I, you know, I'm not even sure what tilapia, sea bass, I mean, those might be farmed, but like there's some types of fish that are caught in international waters that might be overfished, that there needs to be some oversight and some regulatory. And yes. so there are big problems that need to be solved. Most of those really big problems are illegal fishing yes. and going on in international waters. And I think we could spot, shine more of a spotlight on, you know, our domestic legal <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fishing <laughs> that yeah. happens uh, on small boats by our own American fishing families, if that makes sense, yeah, you know. Exactly. It's kind of like you hear all about this, like supporting small businesses. It's like, right. why are we supporting the small fishermen out there that is like really out there on the sea catching the right. fish? Right. So how, okay. I want to ask you a really silly question. So is he literally, is your, your, is your hubby the only one or do you have other fishermen too? We have other fishermen too. So we know right. fishermen that we know and trust up there. Yeah. And are they catching it with a good no old pulls. plastic? <laughs> <laughs> Not like how I caught them. I went, went fishing in Oregon recently. I was like, uh, although like I had a hard time with the, the boat going back and forth. I was oh, like, yeah. God, get me off of this thing. I don't care. But I did catch a ton of fish and it was so much fun. It was so cool. Um, but yeah, so are they doing it with nets? Are they doing it with like a good old fishing pole? How do they actually do it? <laughs> They're doing it with nets. So it's called gill netting. And so it's a, it's a boat for, for Copper River, especially. So Copper River is one river in Alaska and, and it happens to have the best salmon. So, you know, side note, highest omega threes, all the best salmon. And it is, um, you catch salmon as they return to the river and um, this area, I mean, people might imagine like a river with a net across it, but this is 300 miles of ocean beach meeting sandbars. And then this whole Delta um, situation, it's its just like, it's incredible. And it's in Alaska, I mean, it's pristine. There's no roads, there's nobody there. Yeah. And um, they're fishing with gill nets. So these boats are uh, for the Copper River, they're they're regulated. They can't be over like forty three feet, but mostly they're they're fished with one or two guys. So my husband Rich fishes by himself mostly. If it's going to be like the peak time, he might bring an extra guy. And then uh, when we bring the family up, we have a family of five on the boat uh, that we kind of pack onto the boat, which is a whole nother. It's like <laughs> it's like living. It's like camper size, you know, the yeah. whole situation, yeah, but where you can't go that. outside. <laughs> I can relate to the whole camper thing, you know? Oh right. It's like a big road trip, but outside is like just on deck. Yes. <laughs> but, so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I should say just to finish, because I'm like, oh, yeah. I can just go on little details, but it's a gill net and it has um, holes and the holes are targeted. So they have different nets that go different depths and the different net size so they can target each species and size. And so there's a lot of targeting that goes on with those nets and it's incredible how targeted the whole thing is. They're catching just salmon in those nets and salmon of a particular size even. Yeah. And the water is, I'm sure, clean water, which makes a huge difference. You see some of the, just even on that documentary where the water is nasty and the, the fish are deformed. It's so gross. Yeah. That's but you. Oh gosh. Um, but I tell you what, yeah, no coincidence that when I watched the documentary is happened to be when you guys reached out to me to be on the show. It's like, <laughs> oh yes, we're having them on the show. But, and it was so sweet because you guys sent me a box of fish and I'm not kidding you when I tell you this, and I've eaten a lot of fish in my 51 years of life. It is, it was the best 
salmon I have ever had in my life. Yes. And it was so <laughs> it was so pretty. Like I almost like it was so pretty I didn't want to eat it because it was it was that perfect like well I happen to be wearing coral today but it was like a mm-hmm. um it was like an it was like this pretty orange like the way it's supposed to be. The and color they, is outstanding. Yeah. I mean when people see it yeah, uh, we have people all the time on the internet saying, "Oh, you, oh, those are um like our photos are um photoshopped." <laughs> like they're photoshopped, and they're not. I know exactly. You go to their website; it's cinacee.com or cinacee.com, right? Yeah, S E N A S E A dot com. But yes, That's right. You go to their website, and yeah, the pictures are amazing, but they're not photoshopped. Like when you get, that's what it looks like when you get the salmon, and yeah. it, and you know what? It did not have that fishy taste right it tasted actually my boyfriend even said he's like oh my god I think this is the first time I've really tasted salmon because the all the other salmon that we've had before wasn't really true salmon it's really incredible and people tell me you know they're like it didn't smell like when you pull it out of the package it just smell yeah. fresh like the ocean yeah. you know it's 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 not uh it's it's fresh and clean it tastes like salmon yeah <laughs> And then I did have two, um, there was a white fish that I had too, that was amazing. And maybe it was, was it halibut? Just for the halibut? No. I'm trying to um, think. Um, and there was two. I still was have probably people. halibut yeah. and then the black cod or sable oh, fish. Oh, yes. Yes. That's black incredible cod. too. So I still have two pieces of fish left in the freezer on purpose. Cause I was like, I'm going to cook this on Instagram, you know, next week or something like that. So I can show you guys after this airs, but, um, it, no, no joke. Like that fish is so good. So let's talk about benefits, health benefits of eating fish. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Fish has is, I mean, high omega threes is the big thing, right? I did a post just the other day because also, they have, it has incredible protein. I mean, you look, a piece of salmon has over 20 grams of proteins. And, yeah. and like my husband, looked, and this was a couple months ago, he, he's like, see, now look at this, you know, did you know that has over 20 grams of protein? I'm like, Rich, I mean, am uh, I doing a horrible job? Like how, how would you think? I don't know the protein content of the salmon. You're like, uh, <laughs> duh. Like, I mean, you go back to catching the fish. I'm, I'm, I'm like, but yes you know really high protein and it's a clean protein this this um fish go in alaska where it's pristine waters they go out in the ocean they feed themselves what they're supposed to feed and they come back with this high omega-3s high protein zero carbs i mean it's like you can't even you couldn't invent a healthier food high protein zero carbs the fat in it is omega threes, which makes it um, taste good. The it's like beef, where the higher the fat, the kind of the better it tastes. Oh. It, it stays moist, and it has that good flavor. And then, oh. you know, it's unsaturated omega three, so it also makes it healthier. So any, um, you know, the higher the fat, the better it tastes, the better it is for you. And that's really why the Copper River salmon that you had is yeah. like the top of the top. So that's mm-hmm. what makes it kind of like the best on the planet. I never thought about that before. So like the omega, it, like relating it to like fat and beef, right? Mm-hmm. Like the more, mm-hmm. more fat there is, it's even tastier. Yeah. Yeah. So you you get the, the top quality. Beef, I mean, yeah. as you go up to Wagyu beef and stuff like that, it's the extreme fat content that's really making this like premium quality. And our premium of the all premium is our Copper River King. And it just, it has the highest fat content. I mean, it is so buttery and moist it's mm-hmm. it's it's incredible i mean you got the copper river sake that's our bread and butter that's what we eat year round too but the king is like it's only available when it's available and it's like the wagyu beef of mm-hmm. of beef you know it's just like oh my goodness and that's the omega-3s and then it's the benefit of like it and it's great has high omega-3s yeah i mean and that as i know is good for your your hair, your skin, your heart. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, I even take a separate omega also, mm-hmm. which and, is made out of fish. And it's like the more the merrier. You know, you yes. can't over like for one, we can't make it in our bodies. So you have to have it. And if you take an omega three, I'm like, people ask me, should I take an omega three? Should I eat fish? I'm like, do both. Eat the fish. It like I said, it's the higher protein. It's 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 got everything. 
And if you take a supplement, take a supplement too, because it's not going to hurt you to have more. Um, Your body needs it. And, and really the, the more the merrier. I printed off a whole list because I can't even remember all the things. <laughs> yeah, there is so much. Well, and going back to the How to Live to 100, the Netflix series, Dan Buettner and the Blue Zones, that is, there was nine elements um, that ev- they all had in common of the people that lived in the Blue Zones, living until 100 years old. And one of them was, of course, eating fish. Mm-hmm. So, and they were, you know, they mainly have, um, it's a plant-based diet, but then they have fish, they have red meat periodically, not Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, so no lot, not a lot of acidity. And that's really like, when I think about that, like with diet, I look at like the alkalinity and the acidity, right. And fish is like towards the alkal, the alkaline side and disease cannot grow in an alkaline body. I don't know if anybody knows that, but it's true. So I like you that. keep your, yeah, you keep your pH level. I think it's like 7.2 or something like that. Um, so the more acidic you are, then the higher that goes. So for me, like if I feel, if I feel inflamed or I feel like I'm getting sick, I, I add more alkaline foods to my diet, more plant-based, more fish. And as many, and I love every, everyone that I interview on the show and about diet and exercise and menopause and perimenopause, right? And really, I feel like, especially with society and social media and all the fads that are out there, I always say, I'm like, just go back to the basics. Exactly. I feel like, we, you know, like, I feel like yeah. we're trying to reinvent the human body. The human body is what it is. Just like, we're going to find some hack. And it's like, the hack yeah. is do the real, the basics. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like you said earlier about the salmon that goes out there and he's in the, in the, um, in the river and he's eating what he's supposed to eat as a fish. Well, human beings are supposed to eat what human beings eat, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Just go, don't overthink it. Don't stress about it. Eat your fishies, eat your veggies, you know, like don't, you don't have to like, there's no perfect science to it really. And I feel like we've all kind of lost track of that. That's why those people have lived so healthy and yeah. 100 years old. I agree. And how you feel, yeah. you know, when, when yeah. we travel or like, just like you were saying, when you like, when we travel or I feel off balance, I cook a fish dinner. I, I cook a big filet with, and I cook with tons of veggies and I, I just sit down to a home cooked meal, lots <sighs> of veggies, fish. And I'm just like, ah, i I'm home. I'm balanced. Like I I'm okay now. And like, I never thought of it on the pH scale, but yeah, probably that's it too. You know, if I've eaten out a bit or traveling, it's just like, I just need to come home. I need to eat a home cooked meal. (laughs) Yeah. More processed foods or more acidic coffees, liquor, alcohol, like all of that stuff is more on the acidic side. So it's like, yeah, if you ever are not feeling well, then or if you just feel, or if you want to even like just drop a few pounds, just become more alkaline, more veggies, more fish, more water and herbal teas. It's really, really simple if you think about right. it. Hello, beautiful souls. Today, I want to share a secret that's been a game changer in my skincare routine. Bamboo Earth, the most natural skincare on earth. In our journey through midlife, it's essential to nurture our skin with products that are kind, natural, and effective. Bamboo Earth offers just that. Their products are crafted with the finest natural ingredients, ensuring your skin gets the love and care it deserves. Since incorporating Bamboo Earth into my daily routine, my skin feels revitalized and glowing. It's not just skincare. It's a ritual that reminds me to pause, breathe, and appreciate the beauty of this moment. Join me embracing the power of nature with Bamboo Earth. Let's celebrate our midlife journey with radiant, healthy skin. Because when we feel good on the outside, it reflects the joy and confidence we hold within. Discover the magic of Bamboo Earth for yourself and experience a midlife makeover that starts with your skin. Visit skin.windyvalentine.com and receive 30% off your first order. Here's to glowing skin and new beginnings. So here's the thing too. I can remember like, I feel like even like drinking tea, right? How it's kind of like a ceremonial type of thing. Mm-hmm. And going back to like, you're talking about the fish, like just grilling fish. And it sounds really corny, but my first year, um, I was a solo RVer 
And one of my favorite things is that after I would drive somewhere and I'd get set up, like say, let's, we'll, we'll just imagine I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I've got the RV all set up and like the sun is going down, like, ooh, what am I going to make for dinner for myself? You know, and so many people would ask me like, Wendy, were you lonely? I'm like, no, I wasn't. I had a blast. And I loved, I would, I had my grill, I had my little Coleman grill out there and I would grill some fresh fish. And I would grill some asparagus. And the point in all this is like fish, cooking fish is super simple. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. feel like it's easier than chicken and beef and even veggies sometimes. And faster. Yes. And if it's good fish, like you don't have to do a whole lot to it. Yeah. Put a little salt and pepper and lemon on there and call it a day. And it's done in 10 minutes. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So it, that, that's the thing. And I, I work hard to let people know, like, that's a big thing that we talk about is like, just to feel confident with fish. I mean, for a lot of people, there's just a lack of confidence and like, what am I going to do with it? And what about this? And what about that? And I just feel like for me, I, I cook fish on those days when I'm like, oh, great. What am I going to cook for dinner? You know, I didn't yeah. make a plan. I don't have anything. And I always have some of our fish in our freezer. Of course, I can pull it out and put it in cold water in the it's their individual yep. vacuum sealed in the portions while I'm making the rice and it's ready to go. So for me, it's like, it's as fast as like grabbing out the, the chicken nuggets and being like, well, you know, here we go. Exactly. I can defrost it and cook it that fast. And it cooks for, you know, 12, 15 minutes and it's, and just doing it, you get that confidence. And then it's like, oh yeah, I, this is easy and it's delicious. And that, and I feel good after a fish yep. meal. Yeah, it's not heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice and light. You digest it easily. And I mean, as far as like, okay, anybody out there again, like if you're wanting to lose a few pounds or something like that, fish is great because of the high protein. And you don't yeah. have all the carbs and the starches and all that. And I I think of it, you know, even like you like when you just imagine you just said that scene, right? You you're cooking mm -hmm. the food, just reminding me like that's kind of how I feel self-care. It doesn't have to be like a spa day. It doesn't have to be something yeah. fancy or expensive. It can just be going like, what do I need? And what is my body asking for? And for me, that like like a fish and veggie meal is just like, that's taking care of myself. It tastes good. It feels good. It feels right. That's that's going to um, go way further than I've retrained myself because it used to be like, oh, I deserve you know, a chocolate milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I worked really hard. I deserve yep. it. And now I'm like, I deserve somebody, me, cooking myself a really nice meal. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you truly are. You are what you eat and you are how you treat yourself. Right. So, and right. I would have to say too, the food is even how it is treated. Yeah. Because yeah. think about like some of these animals and how they're just with full of chemicals and treated like crap and then they kill them and then they put them basically in a little package and then we take it home and we eat it. It's like, right. Oh. And how, you know, it's just like, there's a disconnect there that we have to reconnect and, yes. <laughs> and, I know. and realize We've had taken great pride and, you know, we have the kids on the boat since they've been young that my, yep. our kids are teenagers now. I still have pictures of them on the website that are very cute and small, but Aww. they've been coming up with us on the boat and we've taken so much pride in just having them be a part of respectful harvesting of the fish and then, you know, eating the fish and being grateful for that. And, and it can be such a full, full circle experience when you do it in a connected way. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, there's love there. I mean, it's it's true. I mean, I feel like when you put when you put the love into how you're getting the food, whether it's like the the farmers or the fishermen, right? right? And then how you're preparing the food and how you're sitting down. And I have to remind myself too, like I'm a busy woman, but like I have to like when I sit down to eat, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm yeah. going to appreciate it. And that does a lot just for your well-being. Yeah, sitting not, down like, to eat. Not your food and just, you know, like there's no respect for the food, right? Right. Um, yeah. We've taken, um, for years we worked the farmer's market. So having the kids on the boat and they see the whole process and then we'd come home, we go and then they come with me to the farmer's markets and that's work. And 
looking around, you know, at the farmers that have harvested their crop that morning, brought it to the market. I mean, they are working so hard. I tell the kids, you know, I mean, it, it was just fascinating to be right in the middle of it. I always told them, you want to see the hardest working people. It is right here at the farmer's market. <laughs> and it's, those are the farmers and they're farming and then they're coming and they're talking about it. But we would trade for produce and there is nothing comparable than eating a meal that is from with produce that you know who the farmer was and all of that connection. And then they love to trade for fish. So it was just like we could just come home with as many vegetables as we could carry and have these fabulous meals. And, it, and it's just it's really it, there's that connection, but then there's the more nutrients too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the things I loved when I when I received your fish is that it had recipes in there, it had little recipe cards, and those are great. I mean, there go the balloons again on my screen. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the balloons on the that screen. Is so funny. I don't know what <laughs> But anyways, yes. No, that is nice. So if you if someone out there is kind of intimidated by, you know, how to cook fish, like you guys yeah. provide some recipes. Do you ever do you have a cookbook or do you you have Yeah, you have we a, have a an online uh, digital cookbook. So it has um recipes of how we like to cook the fish. So when I was working the farmer's market for years and years, I found as I'm talking to people, a lot of people, they want to know how we caught the fish, but they want to know how we handle it, how we cook it. And they're like, no, I don't want to know how to cook it. I want to know how you cook it. Because yeah. Being a multi-generational fishing family, they're like, no, how do you do it? And so we have a downloadable cookbook for, you know, if people sign up for the email, they get, they get that. And it's just like, we just want to give everybody the tools because Mm -hmm. uh, just take all the the boundaries away, you know, all the blockades. Oh, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to cook it. You know, just take all that away. Make it easy. It's so easy. I love, um, I don't know. I was just trying to think of like, do I like sautéing, grilling or um, cooking it in the oven? I think I'm I like, think, I don't know. For me, it depends on the time of year because, you know, yeah. summer, I love to grill. And it's so funny, but salmon especially is like, Sockeye is the spring fish. It's the bright red spring um, salmon and is so good on the grill. It's really good with spring vegetables like asparagus. And, you know, it's so fresh and so flavorful. And then you have coho in the fall and coho is is a uh, milder, it's more buttery. It's a milder flavor, but it works really well in recipes like takes on the flavor of the sauce like I might saute it and or um I do more like saucy kind yeah. of mm, spinach oh. and zucchini that are artichoke kind of saucy bubbly you know it's cooking right in the sauce and so it's it's fun I think to kind of I do it all different and in the winter I do a lot of like I kind of call indoor grilling I just like put it under the broiler you know yes so easy so oh easy it's it's basically i mean there's the air fryer too and you can air fry fish i've done it i have a family of five so i for me it'd be batches but i just put it under the broiler and i feel like well i can just do the whole <laughs> i do a lot of sheet tray baking in the winter time it's like i will do a sheet pan of veggies another sheet pan of veggies a sheet pan of the fish just put it all in there you know and just kind of rotate it out whatever's done i like to do it a different sheet per vegetable so I can pull it out when it's done or leave this one in a little bit longer. But so is it done by subscription or can you buy them individually? How does that work? We do both. We like to keep it easy. Um, you know, I understand people want to kind of try it and get it one time and and just like the idea of like getting your fish shipped in the mail <laughs> to your door you know how does all that work and then we do have a subscription program that's meant to be super simple and work with you so you can get it every every one two or three months you can change the variety what type of species we have a cool um, seasonal variety where it's just like you let us know if you want salmon white fish or both and then we will just give you what's in season so in spring you'll get the copper river sockeye it's like i know you want this this is the best it's in season, as we move through the seasons, we'll give you Copper River Coho. In the winter, it lets us kind of give you what we have more of because every year we don't know what species is going to come in more or less. So it allows us to be kind of tap into the sustainability and, and the availability of with what we're working with. So 
I love that one. I love it when people subscribe to the seasonal subscription. Let us let us do the hard work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Let's see. Today, well, when this airs, it'll be April 1st. So so now is like the the salmon season. In May. So we're really getting yeah. ready for it. It's it's um uh we have we have every, we have salmon. It's everything will start selling out here as we get ready for the new season. And every year, I don't know how we do it, but it, it kind of, you know, like say we have different amounts because we don't know how big a run will be, you know, come in strong or not. So we just kind of work with it. And this time of year, we're kind of selling out of species. We have Copper River sockeye right now, but we won't for long. And then in May, it's a big deal when the, when the Copper River opens because it's the first wild salmon run on the planet. Wow. Um, they're the first to spawn. So it's not our time frame. It's the salmon, you know, they're the first to return. And so it's the first commercial fishery that's open. The whole world is ready for fresh fish, you know, wow. fresh wild fish. So it's a really big deal. Yeah. It's so important. I'm off to say again, of you got to be careful what you buy. And I love whole foods y'all, but whole foods, especially like, even if you go to the fish department right there, and even behind the glass where you're thinking like, this has got to be the best, best fish ever. Now, if you look closely, yeah. it'll say that they're farm raised fish. Yeah. And, and that is, it, you know, there's a lot of little tricks and it, I would like to, it to be yeah. easy. So I don't like to overwhelm people, but like Atlantic salmon, that's a code word for farm because they don't commercially fish wild the last Atlantic salmon anymore. So Atlantic salmon equals farm salmon. and uh, just oh, looking for those little things. Yeah. What I do like to tell people, you know, we catch in Alaska and, um, they don't pay me extra to say this stuff, but you know, they, Alaskan fish just happens to be the best. It's because if you think of it, it's cold, pristine, yeah. you know, and it's sustained, it's all sustainable. And they outlawed, they never from the beginning allowed fish farming, which was so thoughtful and so huge. I mean, there are rivers in the lower 48 in Canada, once they install all these fish farms, the wild stocks, they die out like, like that film. I mean, they, they have to swim through it. They get the fish lights. I mean, it just decimates the wild stocks. So, you know, way back they didn't realize, but mm -hmm. luckily in Alaska, they never allowed farm fish. And so they haven't decimated the stocks. I can't remember where I was going now. Oh yeah. So <laughs> here's the, the cheat code is just look for Alaskan. It usually will say Alaskan. Alaskan equals wild or wild Alaskan. Same thing because all Alaskan is wild. Oh, and okay. that way, you know, it's wild and not farmed. Or it's just or order from CNSC. Or, or just go to our website and they're all good. <laughs> just uh, keep, <laughs> keep it really simple. <laughs> there. Yeah. So CNSC.com, right? Yes. Uh, and that so from there they can go ahead and sign up on the newsletter, which is great. I receive it, which you can get yes. the recipes. I love it when people jump on our newsletter because that's kind of where I put a lot of time and energy, and we have a lot of, you know, we're there to help you. We're going to give you resources, recipes. I'm there every step of the way. I'll help you. Just reply to any email and go like, Cena, I don't know which to choose, and I'll just walk you through it. So that's a really good place um, to start. And then just, yeah, jump on and check it out. I love that you're just this amazing mom, woman, wife that is like doing all this. It's so, I mean, you're running a fishing company. That's so awesome. <laughs> Did you ever it's, think how it happened? Like when you were growing up as a teenager, like I'm going to run a fishing company someday. No, I mean, I would go out on my dad's boat and he was like, do you want me to teach you how to run the boat? Like if you want to be a, a, you know, a fishing boat captain, I was like, no, thanks. I mean, I want to learn how to run it. I'm not going to run a boat though. Like, nah. and then I went to grad school and I studied fish and I was like, yeah, that's all good. Like I still didn't like, I didn't, I couldn't imagine exactly what I'm doing. And it pulls from every piece. Everything I mean, it's, the together. way life works out is fascinating and, and it uh -huh. is not what I ever imagined. And you know, the way that I write about fish and talk about fish. And I would, I wouldn't have thought I could go for 10 years and still have things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you ship just in, in the U S yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just the U S yeah. limited so, to Hawaii and Alaska, but mostly the lower 48, we ship overnight every week. 
I'm going to miss you when I'm in Portugal. I can't get any fish. <laughs> oh, you'll any. have good fish over there, though. <laughs> yeah, there is some good fish over there, too, though. I was telling you about the scabbard fish. You'll have to look it up. It's the scariest fish I've ever seen, but it's so good. Like you said earlier, like the ugliest fish are actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because they're deep, deep water. Yeah. Cold, cold, <laughs> cold deep water is good for fish. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. I hope everyone listening has learned a lot and you'll take this and, and, uh, and apply it in your life because I mean, it's all about being happier and healthier. Don't we all want to be happier and healthier? I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I eat more fish than a sea fish. There you go. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change, or spit out your coffee laughing? Good. Then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, you can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you.